Hey there guys, here we're continuing our adventure through AQA's AS level further maths specimen paper 1. It's turned out to be a bigger job than I thought. So in this video we're going to do question 7 and question 8. Question 7 involves vector equations of lines. It's good fun. Question 8 is all about polar coordinates. A link to this whole playlist is down below in the description as well as a link to the paper. I hope this helps. Let's get cracking. Okay, question 7 answers that a lighting engineer is setting up part of a display in a large building. The diagram down here shows the plan view of the area in which he is working. So the plan view means that we are looking top down. So we are directly above the area in which he is working. He has two lights which project narrow beams of light. One of these lights is set up at a point three meters above point A and hits the wall at a point 23 meters above point D and the other light is set up one meter above point B and hits the wall at a point 29 meters above the point C. So what the question is asking us to do is to create a model to show that these beams of light intersect. Okay, so to do that, we need to think about what these beams of light are doing. They are traveling in 3D space. So what we're gonna to need to do is get vectors involved. Now we know if they do intersect, it's gonna be at some point uh, between where the light is coming from and where the lights hit the wall. So what we're going to do, we're going to find the vector equations of the lines that these beams of light travel on. Then we're going to set them equal and see if we can find values for which both vectors are the same. So let's deal with the first light. First of all, so we're going to say at this point here in the bottom left is zero, zero, zero. So it's our origin. And if that's the case, the light above A is going to have X coordinate 12, Y coordinate zero and z coordinate three because we were told the light is set up three meters above that point so we are thinking of the horizontal here as our x-axis the vertical as our y-axis and then the z plane is coming straight up towards us because we've got the plan view. So then the coordinates of the point where this light hits the wall are, well the x coordinate is 42 the y coordinate is 125 and the z coordinate is 23 So, we want to find the vector equation of the line that connects those two points. Now I'm going to call this R1. So, our jumping on point, or our starting point of this line is uh, 12, 0, 3.
then we're going to need to add on lambda lots of the difference between these coordinates. So the vector uh, a to d, although it's a little bit naughty to think of them like that, because our lights and the point our light hits the wall are actually not at point A and D, they are both above those points. But what we're going to do is find the difference between these two sets of coordinates. So the difference in X is 42 minus 12, so that's 30. Uh, the y coordinate difference is 125 minus 0, so that's 125. And the difference in the z coordinates is 23 minus 3, which gives us 20. So, that vector there, the second one being multiplied by lambda, is the vector from the light itself to the point where it hits the wall. Now we know if there is an intersection point between these two lights, it's going to happen at some point along this line. So once we've found the vector equation for the other light, we're going to set them equal and find the values of lambda and mu. For now though, let's write this as a single vector. So this is 12 add 30 lambda, 125 lambda, and 3 add 20 lambda. So there is the vector equation of the line that the first beam of light travels on. So now we want to do exactly the same thing for the second light. Okay, so the second light then has coordinates uh, 20, 10, and 1. Then the point at which it hits the wall, point C, has coordinates 40, 140, and 29. So, let's now find the vector equation of the line for the second light. So this guy I'm going to call R2. So our jumping on point is the position of the light which is 20, 10, 1 and then this time it's going to be add mu times the vector that gets us from the light to the point that it hits on the wall. So the difference in the coordinates. So the difference in x coordinates is 40 minus 20, which is 20. The difference in the y coordinates is 140 minus 10, so that's 130. And the difference in the z coordinates is 29 minus 1, which is 28. So, as one whole vector, that is 20 at 20 mu uh, 10 
had 130 <laughs> And then one had twenty eight mu. Okay, so now we got the vector for each beam of light. We are now going to set them equal because if they do intersect, there is a point where they are equal. So we're going to set them equal, find our values for lambda and mu and then check that they work. Okay, so setting the vectors equal then, that means the x vectors are equal, the y vectors are equal, and the z vectors are equal. So we're going to get two equations out of this and solve them simultaneously. So the first one we can get is 12 add 30 lambda is equal to 20 add 20 mu. Now what I'm going to do here is sort out the left hand side to just get a lambda term on its own. The reason I'm doing that is the y vector of the left hand vector is already just a lambda term on its own. So if we take away the 12 we get 30 lambda is 8 plus 20 mu and then what I can also do is divide this by 2 which is going to give me 15 Lambda is 8. No, it's not at all. 4 plus 10 mu. So, I'm going to call this guy equation 1. And our second equation is 125 lambda is uh, 10 add 130 mu. So 125 lambda is equal to 10 add 130 mu. Now what I've spotted here is that it's going to really help me if I divide this through by 5 so if I do that, I get 25 lambda is 2 plus uh, 26 mu. Okay, why have I done that? Well, now we can think of a number that 15 lambda and 25 lambda go into, which is 75. So we can change now both equations so that we get 75 lambda and then eliminate the lambdas. So we're going to do 5 times equation 1, which is going to give us 75 lambda is equal to uh, 20 add 50 mu. And then we're going to do three times, forgot my lambda, we're going to do three times equation 2. So that's going to give us 75 lambda is equal to uh, 6 add 
78 Mute times Okay, call these guys 3 and 4 So we can now eliminate the lambdas So I'm going to do equation 4 minus equation 3 so, 78 mu minus 50 mu is 28 mu. 6 minus 20 is minus 14. And then 75 lambda minus 75 lambda is 0. Add the 14, 28 mu is 14. Divide by 28, we get mu is equal to one half. So, we're almost there now, guys. Almost. Now that we know mu, we can now work out what a lambda is. So, we can plonk mu equals a half into any of the, uh, any of the above. Equations. I'm going to put it into equation 3. That looks quite nice. So, summing that into equation 3, we get 75 lambda is equal to 20 add 50 times a half. So that's 20 add 25, 75 lambda is 45, divide by 75, lambda is 45 over 75, which has a common factor of 15, lambda then is 3 fifths. So, we now know mu is equal to 1 half. Lambda is equal to 3 fifths. Okay, we're so close to the end now, guys. Think about what we've done. We've set these two vectors equal to each other to try and find a point of intersection. We use the x and y coordinates from each vector to work out these values of lambda and mu. So we know that these two values satisfy the x and y coordinates coordinates, the final thing that we need to do is make sure that they satisfy the z coordinates of this point. So substitute these values of lambda and mu into each of their vectors and make sure we get the same number. So with the guy on the left, we got 3 add 20 lambda. So 3 add 20 times 3 fifths uh, is going to give us 3 add 60 fifths, which is going to give us 15. So now we need to check that the z coordinate of the second vector is also 15. So that is 1 add 28 mu. So 1 add 28 times 1 half is 1 add 14, which is indeed, thank God, also 15. Therefore, the beams intersect. Cool. 17,410. Then we also need to work out uh, mod A. So that's going to be the square root of 30 squared 
add one two five squared add twenty squared and we also need to work out mod B so that is the square root of uh, 20 squared add 130 squared add 28 squared so for these two we will get root 16,925 and a root 18,084. So now we got our numbers, we rearrange the formula a little bit. Uh, to get cos theta is a dot b over mod a mod b so we get cos theta is 17,410 Divided by root uh, 16,925 times root 18,084. Now, if we plonk that into our calculator, we get 0 0.9951. Okay, so then theta is the inverse cos of 0 0.9951. One. So for that, we are finally gonna get five point six degrees. Good times. Okay, then the final part of this monster wants us to give us one way in which the model uh, could be refined. So, there's one thing that we don't know about here, and that is the thickness of the beams of light. So, the thicker they are, the bigger the point of intersection it would be. So, instead of this point being singular, it would be more like a region in which they intersect. So, we need to uh, take into account In the beam width. Cool. Alright, question seven. Done. Okay, question eight. So, a curve has polar equation r equals three add two cos theta, where theta is between zero and two pi. So, be careful here. We are playing in radians. So part A wants us to state the maximum and minimum value of R. So this is quite nice. R is 3 plus 2 cos theta. So we want to think about what the maximum and minimum values of cos theta are. So the maximum value of cos theta is 1. So when cos theta equals 1, 
r is 3 plus 2, which is 5. So that is the max. And then the smallest value that cos theta can be is minus. So when cos theta is minus 1, r is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. So that is the minimum value. And the second part wants us to sketch the curve. So we need to think about when those maximum and minimum values of R were happening. Cos of theta is equal to 1 when theta is equal to 0. So that's going to be, if we take this point O over here as our origin, then we are going to go through this line when r equals 5 because theta is 0 degrees and now they mean a little bit annoying let's draw a little bit of our line going that way as well we know that cos of theta is equal to minus 1 when theta is equal to 180. So, horizontally to the left of the origin is going to be when theta is equal to 180. So here, r is equal to 1. So our curve is going to look Something like that. The only one to sketch. That's definitely a sketch. Okay, last bit for this video, and it's another GK6 marker. So the curve R equals 3 plus 2 cos theta intersects the curve with the polar equation R equals 8 cos squared theta, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, we want to find all the intersection points in the form R theta. So, at the points where they intersect, they are equal. So, first thing we're going to say then is 8 cos squared theta is equal to 2 cos theta add 3. So we're just setting the equations equal to each other. This is a quadratic, so let's get everything on the same side. So 8 cos squared theta minus 2 cos theta minus 3 is equal to 0. Now then, can we factorise this guy? It'd be nice if we could. So let's give it a go. Let's put a 4 cos in one bracket and a 2 cos in the other one. Uh, so we could put a minus 3 in there, so that would then give us minus 6 theta, and then if we put a plus 1 in there, that does indeed take us back up to our minus 2 cos theta that we want. So, this left hand bracket tells us then we're 4 cos theta minus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore, cos of theta is equal to 
three quarters. And this other guy tells us two cos theta plus one is equal to zero. So cos of theta is equal to minus one half. So now we need to find all the solutions to these two equations in the region uh, 0 to 2 pi. Okay then, let's deal with this guy on the left first of all. So, to get the first solution, inverse cos, 3 quarters, make sure you're in radians. So that would give us theta is equal to 0 0.72 3 radians. Now to find the other guy, it's probably easiest to use the graph. So, 2 pi is there. This first solution is, say, somewhere around here. The other one is going to be over there. So by the symmetry of the graph, this second solution is 2 pi minus 0 0.723. So that, to three decimal, to two decimal places, will give us 5.56. So, from these two then, we are saying that cos of theta is equal to 3 quarters. So we need to get the value of r for these two points as well. So, for that, we're going to use the original equation, r is 3 lots of 2 cos theta. So... When cos of theta is three quarters, R is three plus uh, two lots of three quarters, which is three halves. So we can say. Uh, R is 3 plus 3 halves, which we could say is 4 and a half, or 9 halves. So these two points have coordinates uh, 9 halves, 0 0.7 two, three, and three, no, nine halves, five point five, six. So there's two points of intersection. Now we need to play with the other one, which is a bit nicer. So when cos of theta is equal to minus a half. If we inverse cos, first of all, we get uh, theta is 2 pi over 3. So that's one solution. Again, let's use the graph. So, we're down here somewhere. This first one that we've got, 2 pi over 3. Well, remember in the middle, we've got 
pi. So that first solution is one third pi to the left of pi. So the other one is going to be one third to the right of pi. So this other solution is going to be four pi over three. So our values of theta are theta is two pi over three and four pi over three. So again, we just now need to find the value of r for these values of theta. So again, remember we're saying cos of theta uh, is minus one half. So when <coughs> when cos theta is minus one half, r is three add two lots of minus a half, so minus one, which is two. So our other two points of intersection have coordinates two, two pi over three and two, four pi over three. Good times. Okay guys, that's this part of the paper done. Again, a link to this whole playlist is in the description, as is the paper. Really hope you found this useful. Give us a thumbs up, get subscribed, leave me a comment. It's all good. Take it easy guys.